What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are working on this awesome desk here that I got for a client. This client actually hired me for four different pieces. So this is the first of four and we have three more coming. She has a very cool eclectic art deco style. So we're gonna look to bring that to life for her with these four pieces. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and do all those things so that I can continue making these videos for you guys. And without further ado, let's get flipping. So all in all, this piece is in pretty good shape. It just needs some new finish and some veneer repair. The handles are so unique and absolutely adorable and will go great with the design that I have done for this piece. And look at this wood grain. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to show you guys how amazing this wood grain looks when it's all brand new and shiny. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the hardware so that we can remove the old finish. Before we get stripping off the finish, I decided to fix up more of the major repairs that needed to be done. That way I wouldn't damage the veneer anymore by going in with the stripper and scraping off all the finish and all that good stuff. This piece was just failing in general. The glue was failing, the adhesive, whatever it was. So I just decided to rip it off so that I could cover the entire surface with glue and get better adhesion. Once the piece of veneer was in place, I cleaned up all the glue with a paper towel and then I made sure to put a piece of tape over it. That way the piece of wood that I would use to clamp it down wouldn't stick to the glue and damage the veneer when I tried to peel it off. Now that I've made the majority of the veneer repair, it was time to get started on stripping the top of the piece. Now I'm using QCS Stripper because I absolutely love this product. It is super safe to use, an extremely easy cleanup, and if you guys want, I have a discount code in the description below, so make sure to check that out if you wanna try out QCS. It is absolutely amazing. After about a half hour, it was ready to scrape up and look at how easy this stuff just comes up now. And it's so easy to clean up because all you have to do is scrape off the finish, wipe it off with a rag or a paper towel, and then you can just clean it up with water. I like to spray it down a little bit with a little bit more QCS, give it a good scrub, and then I wipe off the entire thing with just a little bit of water and then scrape off whatever is left and use a paper towel or a rag and you're done. And just look at how unbelievably incredible this wood grain turned out. Oh God, it's so buttery and delicious. Mm, love it. The thing that I think I love most about QCS Stripper is that it uses science to actually burn off the paint or finish, whatever you're trying to strip off. It uses science instead of just, you know, burning off the product. This is actually lifting it off of the surface so that you don't have to deal with harsh chemicals or anything like that. It's just really gentle and it's gentle on you and the furniture. For the drawer faces, I decided to go in with my sander starting at a 120 grit and then moving my way up from a 180 then to a 220 grit. And the reason why I decided to do this and not strip them first was because 
Honestly, I was working with not a lot of time and the veneer on the surfaces of the drawer looked pretty thick and so I felt confident enough to go in with my sander and not feel threatened by burning through the veneer with my sander. And plus, if you keep the movements really fast and quick around the edges and make sure to be very, very gentle, burning through is pretty avoidable. here's that repair that I made on the drawer face after sanding. It's still a little noticeable, but that'll go away once we apply some stain. Once the surface of the piece was dry after I stripped the finish, I went in with a 180 grit and then went over the entire piece again with a 220 grit. I didn't bother with anything lower than a 180 simply because I was just removing basically anything that was left over from the stripper and then I went in with a 220 grit to get everything nice and smooth before I applied a stain. Before moving on to the 220 grit, I went in and patched up any of the missing veneer with this Kirkwood Putty Wood Filler. This is my first time using this product and it was kind of weird to use just because it was very sticky in comparison to other wood fillers that I've used, but honestly the results were so much better than any other product that I've used this far at least. It was so solid and stuck so well to the piece, nothing chipped or anything when I sanded over it. The only thing that I I didn't really care for is that it really didn't stain very well. I might have not gotten the right brand or the right kind or something, but honestly, other than that, I highly recommend it, especially on corners like this, just because of how durable it is. Okay, finally, now we are getting to the good part. All of the repairs are made and everything is sanded down, so I wiped it down with a wet rag and got all of that dust off, and then once it dried, I went in and put on a hickory stain just to make it look really rich and delicious looking. So here's what I was talking about before where the stain didn't just take to the wood filler like I wanted it to, um, unfortunately, but it was a super easy fix. I just went in there with a stain pen and drew over it, but that wasn't exactly matching the color how I wanted to. So I just went in with the hickory gel stain and just applied it like I would a paint. This really made it blend in with the rest of the veneer. I highly recommend trying painting with gel stain if you're ever trying to patch veneer like this because it worked really well. Once everything was stained and dry, it was time to go on with my favorite wipe on poly in a clear gloss finish. I personally love going over my raw wood with a gloss finish just because it makes the wood grain stand out so much nicer in my opinion and it just makes everything look so good. To apply it, I'm using a reusable cloth sponge and it worked actually really well. I wasn't expecting it to, to be as streakless as it was, but it worked very nicely and you can get these sponges on Amazon and I'll make sure to include the link in the description below for you guys. When working with wipe on poly, you want to try to do really thin coats and then build on those coats because if you start off too thick, it can turn out very streaky and it can have a lot of texture to it. But if you do it really thin and just build upon those coats, it comes out so smooth. After applying the top coat, I actually had a two week vacation in New York during the holidays, so this piece had so much time to cure before I went in and did this design. 
My client has a very eclectic and art deco inspired home. So I decided to create a design that would complement that using papyrus. I know papyrus was very popular during the art deco era, so I definitely pulled some inspiration from some classic designs and added my own little flair. By the way, if you are looking for tips on how to find inspiration in your flipping work or you are looking for business tips or how to start flipping furniture, I actually just came out with a book called Furniture Flipping Starting Your Business. It's available on Amazon in physical paperback form, or you can get it for your Kindle. It's full of awesome tips that I've learned throughout my career and things that I wish I knew when I was just starting out. So make sure to head on over to my Amazon link. It's in the description below if you are looking to have some inspiration for your new or existing business. Anyways, let's get back to taping. To ensure that the papyrus leaves really popped out, I made sure to go in with some red paint and just sponge it on there to get a kind of ombre effect that really highlighted the base and just made it pop with that nice, bright, rich red color. I wanted it to feel really natural and organic, so I didn't worry about getting every single leaf exactly the same. So I wanted them to be different sizes because things in nature are not exactly the same and they're not the same size. So I wanted them to be kind of random and to have their own character to them. Sometimes, in my opinion, it's the imperfections that make things perfect. For the gold paint, I'm using my classic liquid gold leaf. And for the tape, although it might look like frog tape, it is definitely not. It's actually this really cheap, generic variety pack tape off of Amazon. And as always, if you would like to check out any of my products, I include all the links to them in the description below. So make sure to check that out if you wanna try out these products. They're awesome and highly recommended by, well, you know, me. This tape is honestly the best tape I have ever worked with. I find that frog tape or any other kind of painter's tape leaks a lot, but this tape is very, very adhesive and sticks extremely well to wooden surfaces and makes the painting experience so easy and effortless. And I don't have to go in with any top coat or anything beforehand and my lines come out looking super crisp every time. Keep in mind that with gold leaf, you have to go in afterwards with a water based top coat instead of an oil based if you are going to top coat it. I honestly never really top coat my gold paint because it just is really durable. It doesn't flake off easily at all and sticks really well to any surface even if I've already put a top coat like I did with this piece. But if you are going to put a top coat just to be safe, I do recommend going in with a water base just because if you go in with oil base, it will smear your design everywhere. So <laughs> to avoid that, just go in with the water based and make sure that it's the same finish as the base that you put before if you put on a top coat before painting. And some of you might be asking why I even bother putting a top coat on if I'm just going to paint over it. And the reason why I do that is because when I do a painted design on a wood piece of furniture, I want to protect the wood from the paint. I don't want the paint to seep into the wood. I don't want people to have to really try hard to get that paint off of there. Should they ever want to redesign it or refinish it or restore it, whatever the case may be, I want it to be possible for them to do that with without having to remove layers of veneer and damage it potentially by just, you know, wanting to remove the paint. So while I hope that this piece stays with this client for a very long time and doesn't get refinished, I always want to keep that in mind that it is a possibility that someone else may want to do something with it, and I want them to be able to do that. To clean up the hardware, I'm going in with the old trusty Brasso and then scrubbing them down with an SOS scrubbing pad. And I found that this was the best combination. Although you do wanna take care and make sure that your hardware isn't brass plated. If it is, you're better off just cleaning them and spraying them or painting them with a color that you want. But just look at the difference that it makes with solid brass. My God, it looks unbelievable and I am so happy with how they turned out. But anyways, guys, we are coming to the end of this video. If you want, make sure to like, subscribe, and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flippin' family. And until next time, guys, stay flippin'.